process of making stained glass has not really changed from from what how it was made uh, a thousand years ago, and and so it really is this kind of ancient craft that is still handmade and um, is still very uh, analog, right, so to speak. We joke that the most recent invention in stained glass is the the glass cutter, and that was 500 years ago. <laughs> When Judson Studios started, uh, the company started actually in downtown Los Angeles. I think the relationship of Judson to the city was influenced by um, what was going on in the city at that time. You know, I mean, uh, when when uh, my great great grandfather came here in 1893, it was really a, a boom period. Those earliest days was doing a lot of the commercial work. You know, a lot of churches were being um, built at that time. And so there's really this boom period. And, and you know, uh, all the way up until the 1920s, right, until the Great Depression. And then all of their funding for like, for windows basically went away, right? Because the, of the depression, they, they really didn't have the money. And, and the city doesn't really recover, at least in, in terms of um, major commissions for Judson until after World War II. The, the booms and busts of the city are something that's reflected in the commissions of, of Judd and Studios. You know, I really believe that a lot of uh, studios are, are affected by their environment. Commissions that come from around Los Angeles are what affect, you know, how Judson Studios kind of evolved over the years. I think it's important to be a, a family business because it is such a, a a craft that is really information that's passed on through doing, right? It's it's not really a, a learned thing that in a classroom, you actually have to do it to advance your skills. I grew up around the studio, kind of, you know, you start sweeping the floors and, and, and kind of, you know, looking at what people do and how they do it and that kind of thing. And so I think that was probably the best education that I got for, for the field that I was in. And so um, that being said, you know, it is a business and, and like any business, it's challenging and, and, you know, families are challenging. And so when you mix the two, a family and a business, sometimes it can be a little challenging, but at the same time, it's a, it's a, you know, it creates a lot of kind of um, a sense of pride and, and uh, you know, kind of motivation to maintain kind of this long tradition. You know, I, I, I take a lot of pride in that and I think it's important. That being said, you know, it's not the only ingredient, right? I mean, I think what's important is that as the, you know, generations, what I've found is in moving um, forward in terms of my own career is, is how do you create your own kind of stamp and, and identity within a company that um, kind of has all of this association uh, kind of a, with it because of its age. We had just completed the largest project that the studio had ever made, and it was completely fused. You know, really I was a point in my career where um, I kind of was trying to figure out where to take the company. And uh, this new technology of fusing was something that um, I felt that as a company, we really wanted to embrace and pursue. And so, you know, making that decision, it was a very risky decision and, and, and a lot of investment involved. We really have, have uh, kind of dedicated this new studio to fusing and uh, believe it'll really change the, the future of stained glass. And, and um, you know, no major studio has done that before. And so we're really, really excited to see um, where that goes. Now, fusing is basically taking frit, which is like a, it's like a, a gravel, you know, down to like a powder. They have four different sizes. 
put them in a kiln and then they, they heat up to about, you know, uh, 13, 1400 degrees and fuse together. And so we can create these amazing transitions of color. It really made me think back about, um, you know, when you have generations that come ahead of you, you kind of want to, um, you know, being the fifth generation, I never wanted to be the last generation. And so, <laughs> so making major decisions made me kind of think about, you know, hey, well, my forefathers had to make decisions like this, obviously, in their careers. And, um, you know, I realized that this looking past, looking to the past really allowed me to think about more about the future in a, in a, in a different way. You know, I, I, I love this city and, and seeing, you know, the, the things that uh, have been made over the years, uh, it's really exciting to, to be a part of that. I do have a favorite piece in Los Angeles, I guess. It's, it's very hard. It's like picking children, right, to a certain extent. You, you love them all, but, uh, you know, I, I think one of the most kind of um, historically interesting pieces to me is, is the top of the dome at the Natural History Museum. And um, that's a piece that was done by my great grandfather in the, you know, I think it was 1914, 15. And so for me, kind of this, you know, stepping back in time and realizing, you know, the, the thousands and thousands of people that have been through there over, you know, the history of, of uh, the city and, and to think about that space. One of those uh, spaces that when you walk into and look up at the dome, it's just a really great experience. And in terms of the libraries of Los Angeles, the chandelier at the um, LA Public Library is one of my favorite pieces in Los Angeles. Um, it was, uh, we believe, 1925 it was made, and um, Judson was commissioned to do the actual glass piece, which is a, uh, a globe. And the globe itself is nine feet in diameter. And then around the, the glass globe are um, the symbols of the zodiac. And so it's, it's just a really amazing piece that um, is really a landmark for the city and, and kind of, you know, a secret, uh, you know, surprise of, you know, so many people don't know that it's even there. And so when you walk into that room, it's kind of uh, just this amazing experience. You know, there's also a great installation over at the um, Memorial Library and uh, uh, it was recognizing the uh, students from LA High School uh, for the soldiers that had fallen in World War I that had graduated from the high school. So that's, that's kind of an interesting, really beautiful window and also kind of like a real meaningful uh, space for the library as well. You know, this idea that uh, stained glass was kind of an early teaching tool, you know, back in the Middle Ages, if you think of it, a lot of folks who didn't know how to read could, could, could learn from the images that were in stained glass. And so it's kind of this interesting, connection with, with libraries and, and uh, storytelling. It's really important that the stained glass kind of fit in or uh, you know accentuate a space and so stained glass definitely has this kind of role in um, in, in architecture and and in uh, you know spaces that we are living in or you know using in some some way lighting is so important to our spaces and especially in religious spaces you know, I think I attribute that to just kind of the spiritual nature of light passing through colored glass. There's something very kind of uplifting, and inspiring about it. Stained glass can, kind of sets this tone of a sense of the sacred for um, projects that are woven throughout the city of Los Angeles.